So, how's the fitness uh, facilities in the hotel? Uh, you think I have time? Yes. <laughs> really? You're telling me you, don't, you of all people don't have time to work out? I, if I had my choice, I certainly would. I walked past it and I sort of salivated, but <laughs> I mean, it's back, back, back to back, back to back. You got little little uh, exercises you can do like on the side? Just no, I, there's no time. I'm a sleep Nazi. I, I sleep eight or nine hours a day oh, or night. Nice. And, um, I don't have time between the interviews and sleep. Did they work you that hard for yes. Clute back in the day? The work you Honey, in? back in the day, let me tell you what it was like. All right. Hmm. You would get on a plane alone, forget the hair and makeup and PR person, okay. and fly to Des Moines and Kansas City and Denver, and you'd cut you know, r ribbons inaugurating an orphanage, what the police gazette parade, <laughs> Dick Clark dance, whatever those shows were. I mean, you, the radio, you had to go to them okay. and you did the weirdest thing and you were alone and had to do your own makeup and it was hard. Well, now, this seems easy. You know, these young ones are spoiled. They don't know what it used to be like. I, I was just gonna say, which was worse though? Because in this, that. Situation, well, in, in this situation, you're gonna be answering the same questions over and over again. I'm an actor. That's why I get the small bucks. <laughs> Let's talk about the boobs in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about those fantastic prosthetic things. That well, it for. required many trips into the valley where the prostheticians, or whatever they're called, make them. They do a mold, and then they create these things, and then you have them fitted, and, and then it took three hours to put them on. And, you know, I, I sort of hate to even talk about it because I was hoping people would think that they were mine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving it all person. away. <laughs> and, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Unfortunately, I only wore them one day. Because also, when you take them off, they disappear. You know, they fall apart. They, they, they're, they're so thin that you, you know, so they just did everything where I needed them in one day. Have, have standards of feminine beauty changed significantly since since Barbarella? I mean, because I can't no. imagine, no? No. Big tits and small hips and round, oh, butts have become more in fashion. <laughs> oh, okay. Booty, as they're called. Booty, booty, booty is the politically you correct way. Booty you, you didn't ever think about booty, you thought tits and... <laughs> now, well, you're, you're a person who's famous for uh, promoting uh, uh, being content with your body image and and, uh, and happy and proud. right because I never have been so, you know you teach what you need to learn, right? Yeah, but uh, but you are now. working out helped me come to peace with my body. But I was I grew up being told that I was fat and un un unattractive, so I had to work very hard to overcome that. And if to, if I said that I was a hundred percent over it, I'd be lying. So why does this woman who's, who's you know, uh, got a career and is respected and, and the, the, truly the matriarch of the family, why does she need, or why did she need to enhance her breast? Well, Maybe. probably because she's like me. She didn't really have confidence in herself. Yeah. And uh, she was going to go out on the road after 25 years and needed, felt she needed a little sprucing up. You're very funny in this movie, and you're very funny here today. I, oh, it good. makes me wish you'd done way more comedies than. Uh, I have done them. Some I of them are so forgettable here. that they wouldn't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the TV <laughs> series is going to be funny. Oh, the Netflix one. Yeah. Yeah, tell us about that. Me and Lily Tomlin play two women in their 70s, married to two guys, Sam Waterston and Martin Sheen. All right. We hate each other, me and Lily. Hate, hate, hate each other. We're so totally diametrically different. Can't wait till our husbands retire so we don't ever have to see each other again. They're law partners. Have been for 40 years. <laughs> and the first episode, I'm not giving anything away that hasn't already been said, so. First episode, um, they tell us to go to this restaurant to meet them for dinner and we know that they're gonna announce that they're gonna retire. Instead, they announce that they've been in love for 20 years <laughs> and that they're going to leave us and get married. And so we are thrown together. And it's very funny. And it's also very sad and poignant because, you know, when you're that old and your rug, the rug is pulled out from under you, you know, I mean, I have to do a scene on Monday afternoon where I have to say to Martin Sheen, my husband, you know, because I've, we end up at a party together, and I see him and his partner, Sam Waterston, laughing, you know, and I say, I, you know, you get to be happy, you know, 
and we're just alone and who are we now we just don't you know you have to totally reinvent yourself and you're old and for a woman to be old is hard and so what I, one of the things that I like about it besides the fact that it's funny and that I love Lily so much is um, is that it gives a cultural face to older women that's more real it's not stereotypical you know but, uh, what would you like to, sorry, to, well, what, what, you really worked hard to get this role, which I find... What, the role in This Is Where I Leave You? Yeah. yeah I, I mean, auditioned. You auditioned for Once. It. It's not so hard. Well, okay. <laughs> what was it that you wanted to do in this movie that you hadn't done before? I wanted to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's how I earn my living, okay? Right. In addition, it's really good writing, and you go where the good writing is good. Holy cow, I mean, I read the script, it was laugh out loud funny, and this woman was fabulous. You know, I totally identify with her. I have no border, porous boundaries. I share way too much. <laughs> and, and I totally identify with her, and um, I just really wanted to play her. And so I said to Sean, of course I'll audition. It's I wanted the role. difficult for, for women in Hollywood to, to keep working to have a long career because Hollywood really television is making it possible that's what I wanted to ask you about television is forgiving to older women and making it possible for us to have long careers yeah you know it's a smaller screen <laughs> <laughs> no it's true. it's true yeah it is true you know I mean the, the exotic marigold hotel is rare that kind of a romp it's just too rare, and studios don't get behind movies that they don't think are going to make a fortune because it costs too much money. I mean, I'm a business person. I know that. It's really expensive these days. You know, the movies that I used to make with studios, you know, like Coming Home and so forth, I never could make those now with studios. Clued? We'd be lesser for them if you didn't make them. Right. Them. Definitely. The, the, this, and just to follow up on the, the cast in this film, it's a young cast. It's a terrific ensemble, and you're working with some some people who are at different places in their careers, like Adam Driver, who's really coming on. Tina Fey, who's an established comic actress and, and a great writer. What's it like to work with with these people? Thrilling. Let me just start with Adam. Okay, mm -hmm. I think Adam is our next Robert De Niro plus Red, Robert Redford. Ooh. I think he's he is the most exciting young actor I have ever worked with. Just, and I've seen everything he's done, except the one he just won the best actor for. Um, you know, but now he's in Star Wars in a very important role that he won't share what it is, but I know it's a very important role. And then he's doing a film with Scorsese. I mean, he's off and running, but the guy is unique. His energy is, and even though he's not traditionally handsome, mm -hmm. sexy, oh my gosh, women adore him. This is it. He's it. I mean, he's the thing. So just watching him and feeling his energy was a thrill. And then Jason and Tina, Ben Schwartz, Catherine Hahn, I mean, they're such great professional comedians who have such a capacity for improv, which is completely foreign to me. I can improv drama, drama but improv comedy takes a different kind of brain. And, uh, you know, because it has to be da dun da dun and you have to land it. <laughs> I have one alt in the movie that actually stayed in the cut. Are you sure? Well, it takes too long. Okay. <laughs> um, the word was sorry, boner. Which I improvised. So you made it. <laughs> but um, it was a tremendous experience. I just felt so lucky to be surrounded by these young, very unique talents. I learned a lot. Tell me Sean, about Sean was saying, saying uh, that he brought his stepmother along, uh, apparently for you to sort of model the queen on. Is, is that, do you get much from her? Sean Lee? No? I'm trying to remember. You had a dinner with her. A dinner with her. No. no? Okay. Don't tell him. Okay, good. <laughs> do, you, do you ever flip flip around and see yourself on TV? I mean, there, there's been so many movies, and they should they pop up. No, I mean sometimes I very deliberately will get out a DVD and look at it for specific reasons. But on television, again, it has to do with time. There's so much great stuff to watch. If you, how can you have a life and see it all? That's why I love Netflix because I will just binge watch. 
you know. What was the last thing you binge watched? Orange is the New Black, and before that, House of Cards. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. And this show called The Newsroom is good to be Oh my watch. God. Okay, the third season, which I think should start. I'm not going to tell you how it ends, I, but I will tell you this. Because he kind of, like everybody thought, ended it at the end of the second season. Yeah. Yeah. But there was so, such pressure on him to do a third season. There's only six episodes. But he found a way to wrap it up. Oh, no. Wait till you see. Okay. It's so good. And he gave me such a good thing. I mean, really. You almost said it. <laughs> you know, the, such a great character. The only pro great character. character. Just, she's you know, he, I mean, to be able to say those lines, you get so spoiled. And, oh, my Lord. <laughs> I love doing that so much. Because there's uh, that great tradition of the female news executive. And actually, we're seeing well, there are no it, women like that, but though. But in Nightcrawler, we're seeing it as well, where she's a twisted version of the female news executive. But we, I, now, who is it? Who plays Nightcrawler? That's her name, Russo. Russo. Oh. And she oh, I didn't know that. Funny. Oh, What's the good. line she said that the kind of news she wants is a woman running down the street with her, th uh, with her throat cut is what she wants to see. That's the, if it bleeds, it bleeds kind of stuff that oh, she Oh, yeah, wants. one of those. Yeah. Was there a really difficult moment for you in This Is Where I Leave You that you had to work on or couldn't quite get or are all the scenes like that? I, I, no, they were all easy except the scene at the Shiva when I'm saying, you know, and then he was so hung. <laughs> I, that that whole riff in there um, was, for some reason, I just had a hard time. You know, they were they were talking about Jane Fonda, and they were saying that she was a trooper, and you show up to work, and, and you're still part of the ensemble of actors. Is, is that one of the things you like about your job? About myself? Well, I'm a pr I come from the old school, and I'm my father's daughter. I mean, you wouldn't have seen Henry Fonda show up late and not know his lines or something like that. No, I mean, you know, just like I said about how we used to promote. I can't believe these young ones who make a movie and then won't promote it. We can't either. <laughs> <laughs> no, you work. You, it's your job. You don't, you know, if you were a banker or an automobile manufacturer, you, you go to work. <laughs> you, you, you want to work, but at the same time, you, I, I guess you're in a position where you don't have to take absolute crap. I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I, you, you, well, I'd, I'd rather cut down on my expenses than to take absolute crap. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to take, you, no. Uh, you know, you, you, you pick uh, shows to be in and movies to be in that are obviously of quality, so. I you, just worked with Paolo Sorrentino, who won, you know, the Oscar for mm -hmm. the Great Beauty, and that was some great experience, too. So you can be choosy. Um, you earned it. So far, you know, <laughs> every year as it goes by, it gets harder. You don't seem to be complacent, either. You're still taking chances with roles. Is, is that well, I, important? But I mean, yeah. You know, if if you if you aren't taking chances and you aren't scared, there's something wrong. I think, you know, I mean, most of the good actors I know, including myself, think every day, "Oh my God, maybe I'm not going to be able to bring it home today, and I'm going to be fired." I mean, my dad until he died, I'll never, you know, they won't hire me for another part. It just goes with the territory, you know. It's. It's why acting is great for the heart and terrible on the nerves. <laughs> great for the heart because it's a profession of empathy. You have to be able to enter another human being and bring them to a life from the inside out. And so you develop the empathy gene. And yet, for the reasons that we just talked about, it's really hard on the nerves because you never know when. The, that's what's so great about a TV series. I go to work every day. It's a steady job. <laughs> so you know, when the hours are long and my feet hurt and it's hard, I, I remind myself, you wanted this, you've got it. Be grateful. Love every moment. Huh? Thank you. Yeah. Indeed. Thanks, Ms. Fonda, very much.